Um, it looks like your pass rush numbers, sacks and hurries are, are down compared to what you guys typically do. Can you put your finger on, uh, you know, why that ha you haven't been maybe getting home and how important is it to, to improve those numbers as you go along? I, I think part of it, Mark, is also how the games have played out. Um, the fact that we've been playing most of the games down by points rather than up by points, uh, you know, where p people feel like they have to throw the ball and, um, you know, to catch back up and things like that. So I think that's part of it. I think it's, it's getting into more third and long situations. There's, there's too many third and manageable situations as part of it as well. Um, I think I think th those are probably the biggest things that have that have jumped out to me is is the situations. But there's also some times where you know we need to we need to win some of the one on ones. Um, but it, it's been it's been a combination. Even in years past, you know we've gotten a lot of our sacks late in games uh, when people are trying to throw to come back. Uh, you know it's something I've always talked about is trying to get more of that early in games, but. You know, we've been pretty productive at it, but it, that's typically where it showed up for us. Tyler Donahue and Ben Jones, you're on deck. Good evening, James. Um, it, I would imagine this is your first practice that, practice week at Penn State in the season where you have don't have a declared starting quarterback. And um, I'm curious how your quarterbacks are responding to that, how you see the offense responding to that, and uh, as you make your way toward the Saturday matchup. Yeah, so um, you know, I think it's 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 gone pretty well. I mean, we've we've had some pretty good conversations, and we're clear, kind of with the quarterbacks about how this week was going to go, and and also with the team. Um, so, you know, uh, obviously, you you you'd, you'd like to be in a different scenario, um, but but you know, I think the guys have I think the guys have handled it well, you know, and you know, I think obviously. Um, you know, obviously we got some you know, situations where Will has played some good football in the past, whether it's, you know, coming in in situations or, or whether it is, uh, you know, coming in against Ohio State when Sean got hurt or when it was coming in last week in the second half and doing some good things. And Sean has got a history, uh, you know, of doing good things as well. So, you know, I think there are two guys that the team trust uh, and that we're going to need both of them. Ben Jones, Audrey Snyder, you're on deck. Hey, James. Um, when a fan or someone says coaching has to get better, that's usually a catch-all for it doesn't look good, but I can't exactly explain why. When you say coaching has to get better or something like that has to get better, what does that mean to you? Because I'm assuming that over the course of the last year, you haven't forgotten how to coach or forgotten various aspects of football. Yeah, I think it's, you know, um, for, from my perspective, you know, it's – it's all of it. It's, um, you know, it's making sure that the staff is clear on what we're doing and how and why. It's, it's making sure that the players are sure of, of what we're doing and how and why. And, you know, that we talk through situational football, which, you know, um, you know, from the feedback that I get from the people that we hire uh, coming from the outside, um, you know, the level of uh, attention to detail, the situational football that we cover, um, you know, the feedback I've gotten my entire career is that, you know, um, it's as good of any place that they've been, you know, um, you know, we take a lot of pride in that. And I think it's served us well. Uh, it served us well over the last 10 years. At the end of the day, right now, I, I get it. Um, you know, I get it. You know, those things are going to come and they should, you know, and they should, um, you know, but as we, as we all are aware of, and I think we all realize uh, there's a lot of factors. You know, there's a lot of factors. Coaching is one of them, um, but there's a lot of other factors as well. Audrey Snyder, Greg Pickle, you're on deck. Good evening, James. Um, hey, we haven't, been in this position before with you where you know obviously you guys own four but what's the message to recruits right now when you're on the zooms with them whether it's 2021 22 23 um what do you tell those guys right now the truth yeah we you know I, i'm i'm very transparent in recruiting i always have been um you know i get into 
you know, probably a little bit more of the, the, the details and a little bit more of the specifics of what going on behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm very truthful. I'm uh, very transparent and honest about what, what's going on. And, you know, obviously there's an opportunity for them as well, but I, but I also think that, you know, there's a, there's a portion of the people out there that, you know, say, kind of to Ben's comment and question just a minute ago, you know, for four years, we've done some pretty good things, you know, uh, maybe the most successful era in, in, in big 10, uh, in Penn state's big 10, you know, history. And, um, that's not happening right now, but I do think, I do think, you know, people look at the whole, the whole situation and, you know, we're just very honest and, and, and upfront. And, and I think the worst thing you can do is avoid it. You know, you, you, you have, you have very direct, honest conversations and you talk about it and make sure everybody's on the same page. And, and it's not always easy to do. It's not fun, you know, jumping on those calls on a Sunday or a Monday. Um, but, but you got to do it, you know, it's, it's, it's part of it. And that's going to be important for us moving forward as well. You know, Greg Pickle, Nate Bauer, you're on deck. Good evening, coach. How are you? Good, Greg. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Sticking with recruiting, the dead period extended again, I think, as most people expected until April. What is the uh, challenge of that in a cycle where you really have not had much time to get kids on campus around you, some of your new coaches or any of your coaches for that matter? And when you look at that decision, do you think there, what do you think has to happen to get us to a point where it is safe to have recruits back on campus again? Yeah, you know, um, I don't like it for the recruits and, and, and their experience and their process. And as, you, as we've talked about before, specifically for, for schools like, like Penn State, that, that, you know, you have to have a very specific plan to get to. It's not something you just kind of pass, you know, on your, on your way to Philly or you pass on your way to, to uh, Pittsburgh or whatever it may be. So um, I think it, it's, it's impactful. Um, you know, but I think at the end of the day, you know, it's hard to justify you know, bringing anybody, you know, into the bubbles that we're trying to create. Um, our focus and our emphasis has to be on our current student athletes. Um, and you don't want to do anything to jeopardize them. And it's, it's challenging as it is. But I also sympathize and, and understand that, you know, we wish the recruits had an opportunity to have a normal experience. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about it from an academic perspective. You know, I, I don't know when schools are going to go back to normal in-person classes. You know, the way it's going right now, it doesn't look like it's going to be anytime soon. You know, our guys haven't had in-person class, I think, in over, you know, a year now, going on a year or two semesters. We haven't had our, our normal study halls. We haven't had you know, our, our, our normal, um, you know, academic support and tutors. And, you know, it's, 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 it's challenging in a lot of different ways and, and recruiting is a big one. So, you know, I feel for these kids that are going through the process, you know, fortunately some, some of them were able to take unofficial visits, you know, when they were underclassmen, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's challenging. I also think the schools that have, you know, large numbers of, you know, division one prospects within their state that are, you know, that have been over already multiple times that helps too. Hey, Bauer, John Dishnock, you're on deck. Hey, James, how are you? Good, Nate. How are you, man? Good. Hey, um, how would you evaluate through four games? Uh, I know this is broad, but your linebackers in general and more specifically, are, are there ramifications to, to Micah's absence two or three steps beyond just his immediate impact on the field? Well, yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, we talked about it before, you know, obviously you, you, you take Micah Parsons out of the equation, you take Journey Brown out of the equation, you take Noah Kane out of the equation. Um, you know, those, those things have an impact. Um, you know, the other thing to your point is, you know, you kind of had a plan of how you were going to use all those parts. And then, you know, that changes and, and guys that, you, that have played a lot of football for us and that you're confident, 
are taking on new responsibilities and taking on bigger roles. And, um, you know, it, it impacts depth. Uh, it impacts, you know, the difference between being a complementary player like we've gone through at running back and, and become primary players. Um, you know, and then there's, there's also, you know, the communication aspect, kind of like an offensive line who's played together for a while. You know, guys that have just been on the field they're not seeing things for the first time. They're not trying to solve problems out there for the first time together. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's moving parts. Um, it's moving parts. And then I think, you know, as we, as, as we all realize, you know, um, you know, some guys are erasers, you know, uh, you know, Mike is an eraser. He can, he can erase problems and issues by making plays and, 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 um, you know, and, uh, and, uh, you know, making some, making some, whether it's tackles for loss or whether it's sacks or, you know, those types of things, interceptions, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, you know, so it's, it's a, it's an amount of production that you have to replace. And it's one thing to lose a guy at the end of the season and have all off season to prepare for that. And it's another to lose a guy right before the season starts um, who was planning on, on being here. You know, I, it, you know, so it's, 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 uh, it is what it is, but, but, you know, obviously that's a, it's a lot of production and a lot of changes. Last two questions, John Petitionock, then new guys will born. Hey, good evening, James. Appreciate your time tonight. You too, John. Hey, a few weeks ago, you mentioned that players are resilient. I wanted to ask, what have you seen from the guys over the last few weeks that shows you that they're being resilient and will continue to find a way to be successful? Well, I, I think, you know, it's, it's, I, th I think what I saw, you know, in the second half, now, again, I know everybody wants, you know, four quarters. I do too, trust me. Um, but, you know, I thought how we battled, um, you know, in, in the second half of, of you know, uh, our game this past week and gave ourselves a chance to win. I think we were 17 to three in the second half. Um, yeah, it's obvious we got to play better for four quarters, but I think that that's a sign. Um, you know, I think the feedback I get from the coaches and how the guys are in meetings, the things that I see, um, you know, how are guys in the weight room, how they are in the locker room after games, how they are on the bus, um, you know, all of it with, with a lot of distractions, you know, with, with not having their family the way that they normally would, uh, with not having school the way they normally would without being able to interact with your teammates the way they normally would. It's just, it's very different. And, and when times are tough, you want your support system, you know, your normal friends, your normal coaches, um, you know, and also, and also, um, you know, and also your family. I mean, typically our guys are able to hug and kiss their families before they go in the game. And afterwards they're celebrating with them or tailgating or whatever it may be. And, and nobody has that right now. Um, you know, I know a couple states have got even more stringent here. Um, you know, a couple states have, have, have you know, I think they there's going to be no fans, you know, in a couple uh, stadiums. There's, um, you know, and I think, you know, we have some things that, that are changing here in our state of Pennsylvania and here specifically in Center County. So, uh, you know, it's, it's spiking right now. Um, the other thing is, you know, we continue to have issues, you know, with, with, you know, with false positives, you know, and we're, and we can't seem to get a whole lot of feedback and support to get answers to it. Um, you know, we've been for about a month, we've been trying to figure out why we're having so many, uh, you know, we didn't have Terry Smith for two days this week and we didn't have Brent Pry today. You know, um, it's, it's been, it's been an issue all year. I think we're up to 43 false positives. So that's 43 people in our football program that have missed practices. So, you know, we, we don't, we're knock on wood and thank God we're not having the COVID positives where guys are like one or two guys are miss, missing long periods of time, but we're constantly missing, you know, players and staff from practices and meetings and work all day. So, um, it's just a lot of different moving parts right now. I, you know, I see all over the country, you know, games being canceled or postponed or whatever it may be, you know, and I think knock on wood, I, again, I, I hate to say this because, 
you know, it, it could change on you quickly, but you know, we've done a pretty good job of keeping everybody safe and healthy. And that's my number one priority, but we also got to do that and, and play good football. We got to do both. I think we've done a pretty good job of one and we got to do a much better job with the other to find a way to serve both of those masters. Last question to Bias Wilborn. Coach, um, you mentioned not having Terry Smith. You mentioned not having Proach Pry. I mean, and of course, having different players being out for it's like, how do you truly prepare if you have coaches? And I know next man up and everything, but how do you really do it having that much absence? You only have so much time in practice. Yeah, to your point, it's got to be next man up and and you got, you know, Zooms, you got people on computers running around at practice holding computers and, you know, for the players and and for the for the staff and and you know, uh, coach Pry wasn't in in meetings today, but we were able to, you know, have them on via Zoom and and you know, as you, as you could imagine, it's not the same, but again, it it is what it is. You know, um, you know, we, Obviously, you know, coaches and, and the conference and, you know, across, across the country, everybody was fighting to try to, to get this season to work. And we knew there was going to be challenges that came with it. And, and there's been a lot of them.